So what is going on guys? I'm Black Ops Amazing. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Now, let me convince you that Shangri-La is on Mars. But not all of the time. Let me convince you that Tagder Totin is on Mars's moon. But maybe not all of the time. This obviously is a very old rumor, theory, whatever you want to call it, that's been in COD Zombies since the map Shangri-La released back during 2011, Black Ops 1 Zombies. There have been countless videos made, countless posts asking the question, is Shangri-La on Mars? Isn't it? And I think this is something I've always overlooked simply because it's always been difficult for me to believe. But in this video, I am 99.9% .9 sure, which is as sure as you can be without Treyarch officially confirming it themselves, Shangri-La is on Mars. Tagdo Totin is on one of its moons. I would without a doubt say this is the biggest mystery ever within COD Zombies. Now within the final Black Ops 4 Zombies map, Tagdo Totin, which we know is set near the Tunguska River in Siberia, there is an Easter egg which, as far as I'm aware, nobody fully knows how to do properly, but we know some of the steps and the result, where one of the flingers flings you across the map, over the water, where you land in this small pool. You then swim down through it for about 30 seconds, and when you come out the other side, you see right in front of you, Mars. It's very easy to say that this for sure is Mars because we can tell by the marking on the planet. You can compare the two. So we know right in front of us is the planet Mars. Surrounding us is a lake of water, a dock, a small boat. And when you arrive here, the music from Shangri-La begins to play. An obvious nod back to the whole idea of Shangri-La taking place on Mars. Now, when I first saw this back when Tagdo Totem released, I was like, okay, there surely can't be much meaning or reason to this though. It simply must be just a Nice little throwaway easter egg, a nod back towards the theory of Shangri-La taking place on Mars. If you look how close we are to the planet, at the time I was like, it doesn't really make too much sense, so I'm not going to think any more about it. But when I started to link everything together, which I'm going to show you in this video, actually, I was wrong. And this proves Shangri-La is sometimes on Mars. This part isn't new, but notice how close we are to Mars. I thought, okay, if there is any substance behind this, what planet or what moon could we be on if we are able to see Mars from this close up? Mars actually has two moons, which are called Phobos and Deimos. Phobos is the biggest moon of the two and also the one that's closest to Mars. The two you will notice are quite different and distinguishable from each other. So if we are able to see Mars this close up in Tagdo Totin, we must be viewing it from either of its two moons, more than likely from Phobos. There is of course the issue of gravity, an atmosphere, the lake in front of us, and the question, well, if we know Tagdo Totin is set in Siberia, how can it at the same time be on one of Mars's moons? All of which I'm going to come back to, but if we now go over to Shangri-La, well, we know now that this map takes place in the Himalayas. But when it released, and this is where this whole theory came from, we didn't. But it wasn't just a random theory. Within the game files of Black Ops 1, the mountains on Shangri-La included the word Mars. The director of Zombies at the time, Jimmy Zelensky, put out a tweet basically saying that Shangri-La was the biggest, most well hidden secret within Zombies. And of course, if you just look at Shangri-La itself, the mountains, the red colour scheme, it does look like it could take place on Mars. So that was the theory during 2011, 12, 13 and so on, up until it was basically confirmed that Shangri-La is on Earth in the Himalayas. There is a world map that you can find in Alpha Omega, where in this region, there is a note that says Time Paradox Site, Potential Gateway. And if you're familiar with the zombie storyline, what reason did Brock and Gary have for coming to Shangri-La? That was to find the gateway to Agatha. They thought it was located here. And we have on this board in one of Broken Arrow's facilities saying that somewhere in this region where Shangri-La is supposed to be located, there is a potential gateway to Agatha, a time paradox site, time having a big role to play in Shangri-La's Easter egg. So we have proof that this map takes place on Earth, and also there was the issue of a breathable atmosphere. The oxygen on Earth would be different to what it would be on Mars. Just how we need a spacesuit to breathe on the map moon, we would also need one to breathe on Mars. And the other one being, if you know the story, if you've read the Canorium, it straight up tells you, on April 25th, 1956, while travelling to Shangri-La, Brock and Gary's plane crashes in the mountains as a result of a freak atmospheric event, another side effect of temporal refs created by premise whilst travelling to Garakarovi. As far as I know, there aren't many planes that fly over Mars, so yeah, there's plenty of proof that it takes place on Earth, so maybe asking, well, Eli, isn't this video supposed to convince us that it takes place on Mars? Okay, well, as a part of Shangri-La's main easter egg, which is called Time Travel Will Tell, it involves, as the name implies, travelling back in time. A segment of this easter egg involves hitting panels around the map, which causes an eclipse and sends you to the past. But whilst you're in the past and the eclipse is happening, 
you will notice if you look up, the moon looks noticeably different to our moon. If you compare what it looks like when you're sent back in the past in the game to how it looks normally, we can see what the moon normally looks like in the Shangri-La loading screen. Here in the loading screen during the eclipse, this is what it would look like if it was our moon. But in game when we cause this to happen, it's very obvious that whatever this is blocking the sun, this moon isn't ours. We are no longer looking at it from where we were, from our planet. And it's very difficult to see this, but if you look in the sky during the eclipse, you will notice floating in the background is a, another small rock. I never really noticed this up until now, but we see two different unknown objects in the sky. The one causing the eclipse and the other one just floating in the background. Okay, so as I brought up in the beginning, we know that Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. So when I saw the smaller, further away piece of rock floating in the sky during the eclipse in Shangri-La, because I'd already been looking at pictures of Mars's moons, I noticed that it looks very similar to Deimos. Of course, there are many different pictures of what Deimos looks like. It depends where the sun is, where the light's coming from, shadows. So it's never gonna be exactly the same, but I put the two side by side in Photoshop. I shrunk Deimos down to the size of this rock in Shangri-La, put it over it, changed the transparency. And as you can see, besides from this tiny part on the left where the shadowing is, Deimos lines up almost exactly with the shape of this rock floating in the sky in Shangri-La. This, what we are looking at, is one of Mars's moons. But what we also have during the eclipse is another rock covering the sun. And what is the other of Mars's moons? Phobos. When the eclipse takes place during Shangri-La, no longer are we looking at the sky from our planet. We can't see our moon anywhere. We're looking at the sky from Mars and we see Mars's moons. Deimos, far away, the furthest moon and the closer one covering the sun, Phobos. So like the other one, I tried to compare pictures of Phobos to this moon covering the sun. Now this one does look a little bit different. The shape I would say isn't exactly the same, but the other thing I would say is, and this image that you're looking at is Black Ops 3's version of Shangri-La, but if we go to Black Ops 1's, Troyok suspiciously made the moon in BO3 Shangri-La look quite a bit obviously different to what it did in BO1. But if you compare what it looks like in Black Ops 3, they've made it a lot more jagged. So as soon as we see this, we're like, okay, that's not our moon compared to on Black Ops 1, where it wasn't as noticeable. Some people might have been like, the moon looks a bit weird, but I would say it wasn't noticeably different where you would massively question it. So what I think Troyok could have done is because, well, I was going to say this theory wasn't talked about as much during Black Ops 1, but it was. But I think when they remastered this map for Black Ops 3, they made these differences a little bit more obvious so we'd get talking about it again. Troyok very easily could have copied and pasted the moon that they used in the Giant or Derizon Dracker and put it into the Zombies Chronicles version of BO3, but instead they went out of their way to create a different looking moon. They put in more work than they had to for something that doesn't mean anything, doesn't make sense. Troyok not only didn't go down the simple route of taking the moon from the Giant and just pasting it back into this map, but they made it shape in Black Ops 3's remaster more obviously different to what it was in its BO1 counterpart. There is a reason for that, and it's because they wanted us to notice it, but at the same time, not give us the answers. So when the eclipse happens in Shangri-La and we are sent back in time, the sky changes and we see a different moon, one different to ours, causing the eclipse, and in the background, further away, we see another moon, Deimos and Phobos. But if we know that Shangri-La takes place in the Himalayas, how all of a sudden when the eclipse happens, is it taking place on Mars? Well, I think not only are we sent back through time, but we're also sent through space and time to a different location. And this isn't weird because we've seen this happen in Zombies before, the map buried. That was an old mining town from the 1200s that took place in the Old West, but was sent by temporal rifts through space and time to the year 2035 in Angola. So we've seen Zombies maps teleported through space and time before. It definitely isn't out of the ordinary. Of course, the question is then, well, how does the atmosphere stay the same? How are our characters able to breathe? A huge part of the old zombie storyline involved alien technology, Nazi experiments, Vril, the Vril we now know in Zombies as the Keepers. In Shangri-La's loading screen, we see a few things going on. We have the temples, the mountain range in the background, and then we see a freak atmospheric event, a tornado, lightning, and on the floor in the vegetation, there is the Black Sun logo or the Vril symbol. Like a lot of things during that time, the implementation of Vril in Zombies is actually based off a book called The Coming Race, which is about the Vril Society. The Vril were a race of extraterrestrial humanoid subterranean species. 
but at one point a long time ago, Mars was inhabited, not only by the real, but by people. It had a civilization. And we compare that to real life, we know that Mars used to have water on it. They say where there's water, there's life. It was between 4.1 and 3 billion years ago when conditions on Mars may have been habitable in real life, but because Shangri-La came out as a part of our old zombie storyline when Vril was a massive part of it, compared to how it was involved later on, the idea of there being a civilization on Mars a very long time ago makes sense. If we are sent back during the eclipse, we don't know how far back in time we go. Maybe to a time when Mars was inhabited. Maybe to a time when it had an atmosphere similar to what we have on Earth, which is why when the eclipse takes place, you don't notice a difference. Or the other option could be, because it was inhabited by the Vril, an ancient subterranean race, an advanced species, maybe they created a way to breathe on Mars. Either way, when the eclipse happens in Shangri-La and we are sent back through time, we know that for sure, we're also sent through space. The eclipse teleports Shangri-La through space and time to Mars in the past. And I've just given the example that this isn't new in Zombies because the exact same thing happened to Buried. When there's no eclipse, when Brock and Gary arrived here, Shangri-La is in Earth, the Himalayas, but when the eclipse takes place, it's teleported back through space and time to Mars. And then when the eclipse stops again, it's teleported back to the future, back forward in time, back to Earth. But I said to you guys at the start, there is a link between Shangri-La and Tagda Toten, also Call of the Dead. Not only that Shang is on Mars and Tag is on one of its moons, but also the storyline. In Shangri-La, we have Brock and Gary, two British explorers. They come here, they discover Shangri-La, believing it's a gateway to Agatha. They arrive at the jungle, the eclipse gets triggered, and they end up getting trapped in a time loop. They travel through the temples, they die, and the loop is reset, leaving them trapped in Shangri-La. Shangri-La, the city of gold. Mm, no, hang on, uh, I, I got that wrong. The, the city of gold was somewhere else. Well, it would have been if it actually existed. Anyway, a lot of explorers went looking for it, believing that it might reveal the gateway to a uh, Gasp. Two such misguided fools, Brock and Gary, they got themselves locked into a temporal loop, doomed to relive the same events over and over again. Poor soul. You know, that kind of thing happens more often than you realise. They also end up getting joined by Sally, who we know is George Romero's assistant from Call of the Dead. When George went missing, she went looking through his research. She ended up discovering that he'd found something out about Shangri-La, and when she read this, she was then teleported to the jungle, where she also became trapped in the same loop as Brock and Gary. So I started with a simple one. Something about two guys named Brock and Gary looking for Arthur. They finished, like, dead. Next thing I know, I'm in this jungle, and it's hot and humid, and the sky goes black, like dark black. I look up, there's an eclipse, and these things start chasing me, like zombies. Trust me, I know how it sounds. I've been fighting them so long now, I should be dead. In fact, I'm pretty sure I have died, but it just keeps going. So we have three characters in Shangri-La trapped in a time loop. Every time they try to escape, they end up dying and are sent back in time. We now come over to Tagdo Toten, where we have Pablo Marinus, a hermit who is living in the lighthouse. He's been here ever since this facility was active during Group 935's reign. Pablo thought he had been killed by Group 935, but he ends up, as he describes, waking up from his watery grave. He then attempted to escape the facility, but every time he got further away from it, every time it faded in the distance, it then reappeared back in front of him. Day 521. I still don't know how it is possible, but late last year, I awoke from a watery grave. When I swam to the surface, I found the German military base abandoned. Only the undead remained on their shores. I attempted to flee, but, but the fog, it seemed no sooner that the shore faded behind me, it reappeared in front of me. Every attempt I made to escape, it, it led me right back here. As if I was meant to be here. I have begun broadcasting a radio signal. I'm hoping that someone will answer and come to my rescue. But if no one comes, I'm not sure how much longer I will survive this place. Just like how Brock and Gary and Sally became trapped in Shangri-La, every time they attempted to escape, 
They were brought back. Every time Pablo Marinus attempts to escape Tagdo Toten, he can't. He's trapped in a loop in Tagdo Toten, and Brock and Gary and Sally are trapped in a loop in Shangri-La. I've explained how Shangri-La takes place on Earth, but during the eclipse is on Mars. But we know that Tagdo Toten is in Siberia, so how at the same time is it on one of Mars's moons? Now this one I'm not as sure about as Shangri-La as to how it would work, because there's no eclipse as far as we can see, there's nothing that would send this map through space and time to be teleported to Phobos, but when we go through this ice cavern, when you swim down through the water and then come out on the other side, and you see that you are on Mars's moon and the planet's in front of you, when we enter the water and swim through, I think there could be two different explanations here. Either Tag the Totem always takes place on Phobos, or when you swim through, you go down and through to the other side. That is in some way representing you entering a sort of wormhole, traveling from one dimension to another, as you would with a wormhole. It's a hypothetical structure that connects different points in space-time. As you can see from this picture, the wormhole visualizes a tunnel with two different ends at separate points in both space and time. Could us swimming through the water be that wormhole? On one end, that is Tagdototen on Earth, and when you enter the wormhole, you come back out at a different point in space-time, with the time perhaps like Shangri-La being far back in the past, and the location on the moon of Mars. So that is one theory. The other one which I'm not as convinced on, being that Tagdototen takes place within Phobos, within the moon, and us entering the water, and then coming out on the other side, represents us coming up to the surface. That's a theory that I've seen, one which for me isn't as believable. You could ask the question, when we come out the other side, could that just not have any connection to Tagdo Totem at all? We just end up on Mars's moon at a different time, but Tagdo Totem isn't there. When you were here, if you look around behind us, you can see the lighthouse, you can see Tag. I'm not sure if Troak fully intended us to see it in-game, so that you could question. If it does, as far as the story goes, when Pablo attempts to escape the lighthouse and every time he gets so far and it fades behind him, not long after, he sees it reappear in front of him again. If this wasn't him trapped in a loop, maybe the simple reason why he can't get that far away from Tag without it appearing back in front of him not too long after is because he is on Phobos. Phobos is a very small moon. It's 10 by 14 by 11 miles or 17 by 22 by 18 kilometers. I don't know how long it would take you to walk that or swim it, but that isn't far. So maybe the simple reason why he can't escape is because he's literally just traveling around the moon because it's a small one. That's why Tag Totem keeps reappearing back in front of him not long after. The other questions of course are, well, when we arrive at the other side, there is water, but on Phobos, there is no water, but there is ice on Phobos. Tagdo Totem is surrounded by ice. Depending on if it is sent back in time when you enter this wormhole or rift, could it be millions or billions of years ago, similar to Mars, when there was water? You can use the same explanation as Mars for a breathable atmosphere, or maybe it's just something in this case that you have to ignore. And the biggest reveal for me, the most obvious one that there is something to this is in the music video by Kevin Shearwood, who we know is the guy that does most of these songs for COD Zombies. In Tagdo Toten's music video, A Light from the Shore on his YouTube channel, if you've seen any of his music videos, you will know a lot of the videos has some weird relation to the map, but it's not always obvious, sometimes it is. But anyway, on this one, the video, while the song is playing, seems so random because it is just what looks like a meteorite or a moon. Which, of course, if I didn't make this video and you saw this, you would think, well, what relation does this rock in space have to do with Tagdo Toten, a map that takes place in an icy Siberia? So the music video starts off with us just seeing this rock floating. It then zooms out, where we see it's pretty close to a planet. As the music video progresses, we then see a forest, the lighthouse. This makes sense, this connects to Tag. Then, right at the end of it, as we see the lighthouse, it zooms out and we see this rock in space again. But it's represented in a way that it's showing Tagdo Toten inside of this rock or on it. None of this would make any sense, but knowing everything I've just said with Tagdo Toten being on Phobos, Mars's moon, and then in the music video A Light from the Shore, we see a strange looking rock. It zooms out to reveal and visualize Tagdo Toten inside of it. This is from Kevin Shearwood's official music video. This would have been an idea of Troyok. It would have had their approval. It's not just something random Kevin would have done. Troyok would have come up with this idea. There is a reason to that, and it would make little to no sense without me just making the point that Tagdo Totem is on Mars's moon. Whether it's on it all of the time or not is a question you can ask, but when we enter what is a representation of a wormhole, a teleporter, a rift, whatever you want to call it, we enter this wormhole and then come out the other side and we see us on Phobos. It is just too much of a coincidence that in the music video, we also see Tagdo Totem represented 
on a small rock on Phobos. So Shangri-La takes place on Mars, but not all of the time, only during the eclipse when it's sent back through space and time. Tagdo Totem takes place on Mars' moon, but perhaps not all of the time, only when you enter the wormhole and you travel from one dimension to another, one that takes place on Earth and one that takes place on Phobos. This is something I didn't believe for the longest time, especially the Shangri-La theory, but having put all of this together, this is as much as a confirmation as you can get without Treyarch officially coming out and saying, yeah, I don't feel that's something that they were ever going to say. This was something that we had to put together, and it's always been a theory, and I truly do think perhaps that's what it started out as. We know during the older days of zombies, that's what the storyline was, the community coming up with theories. Sometimes they were right, sometimes they weren't, and sometimes, even if they weren't right, they ended up becoming right because Treyarch heard those theories and implemented them into the game. But there is way too much to this for it to be a theory anymore. Anyway, this has taken me ages to put together. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Are you convinced? Maybe you're still not. Are there any other ideas that you guys have? Let me know. Drop a like rating if you've enjoyed. I know it's been a long one. Make sure you are subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.